a few witnesses that can thank God sometimes for what did not happen. <laughs> Y'all feel me on it? Listen, and once he brings you through it, you can say like I say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is. Praise the Lord, everyone. How is everyone doing this morning? Truly, indeed, it's a blessing to be in the Lord's house one more time. Amen. Pray that everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful Fourth of July weekend. I know y'all are going to be cooking your ribs and rib tips and oxtails and chicken and all that good stuff, aren't you? Well, if y'all don't mind, you can stop by my house and bring me something to eat. Amen. But truly, indeed, God has been good to us all, just giving praise and thanks to our Lord and Savior for allowing us to be here this morning and ask that we continue to keep um, our church family, our community, and our nation lifted up in prayer. Um, this morning, I'd like for you all to keep Deacon Walls lifted up in prayer, um, Sister Pargo, um, Sister um, Virginia Crump, um, and uh, Deacon Darden, of course. Um, is there anyone else that I'm missing? 
uh, Sister Michelle Harris also. Um, thank you, honey. Um, and anyone else that you know of that needs to be lifted up in prayer, please keep them lifted up in prayer today. Amen. But at this time, I actually want to stand for our scripture reading. Our scripture reading this morning will be coming from John chapter 6, verse 35. John chapter 6, verse 35. And our scripture this morning, it reads, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I read unto you John 6 and 35. Let us pray at this time. Most gracious and heavenly fathers, we come before you this morning. Father God, we just give you thanks and praise, O oh Father, for your mercy and for your grace. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, O oh God, for this morning that you blessed and allowed us to rise and see another day. Father God, as we stand before you now, we just pray for forgiveness for our sins, O oh Heavenly Father. Father God, we pray that you continue to look down upon us and guide us, God, in all that we do. Father God, we pray for our community, we pray for our nation, O oh God, but we especially pray for those that are sick and shed in upon this day. Father God, we ask that you just grant them healing upon this day, O oh God, touch their bodies and touch their minds. And Father God, we continue to ask, O oh God, you lead God and direct us, God, here in the ministry of St. Paul. God, that we'll be uh, effective, O oh Heavenly Father, accomplishing your goals, what you would have for this ministry to do. Father God, we pray over our First Lady, we pray over our pastor this day, God, in his absence. And we continue to ask, so God, you continue to lead God and direct him, oh God, that this ministry will go in the direction that you will have for it to go. Father God, we thank you for it all now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now be in the hands of our praise and worship leaders.
Truly indeed, God is good. Walk with me. Amen. Thank you all for that selection. How's everyone doing this morning? Truly indeed, God has been good to us all. God has been good to us all. And just like to say, as we are sitting here today, let us continually, continually keep each other lifted up in prayer. Amen. Let us pray this morning for our pastor in his absence. Um, he's with the school, the beta team, I think in Nashville this week. So let us continually keep them lifted up in prayer that they will do well and on the safe travels back home. Amen. But let us keep each other lifted up in prayer. Um, as we are facing many things that continually come at us um, on a daily basis, we need prayer. We need prayer. And so truly indeed, if we keep each other lifted up in prayer and be there for one another, we can see our way through it. Amen. And so this morning, we have a wonderful, wonderful sermon in store for you all this morning. I know that your attention is probably on something um, in my direction, which I'm not going to say anything about it until later on, um, and we will uncover what you are so interested in and distracted with this morning. But truly indeed, God has something in store for us this morning. And so I'm just going to leave that there where it sits, Deacon McKenzie. And so this morning, we're going to look at Psalms chapter 84, Psalms 84 verses 1 through 12, Psalms 84 verses 1 through 12. But before we get started, let us continually keep the members of our church lifted up in prayer. Um, as I had stated earlier, uh, Sister Michelle Harris, uh, Sister Virginia Crump, Sister Pargo, um, Deacon uh, Walls, and of course Deacon Darden. Um, but let us keep all our members lifted up in prayer, amen, for the things that they're going through and dealing with. But. Um, but as we look into heaven, as we look into our Lord and Savior, there is an answer for all the things that we're dealing with. And there is deliverance from the issues that we deal with in our lives. But as we look this morning into Psalms 84 verses 1 through 12, the scripture reads, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Salah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them who passing through the valley of Baca make, well, make it well, make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord of hosts, O God, Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Salah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon my, the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will, will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, look at this. Blessed is the man that what trusteth in thee. I read unto you Psalms 84 verses 1 through 12. And the thing that I find very interesting this morning, St. Paul, is, is that when we look at living within our means, we look at it in a financial sense. But if we were to look at living within our means from a godly perspective, it would look a little something like this. Spiritually, we will be covered by what? Grace and mercy. Physically, our needs will be met from heaven's storehouse. Mentally, our worries would be resolved because we can cast all our cares on Jesus. And socially, we would have a confidant named the Holy Spirit that would guide and speak to us with all that we go through. So is that something tangible? Or is the main focus still on what money can provide? and not the source of all our blessings. 
By no means am I suggesting that we don't need money. So don't get me wrong. But what I am suggesting is that we need to stop for a moment and refocus. Life is full of choices. But sometimes those choices can either be life and death choice, they can be success or failure, they can be victory or defeat. What choice will we make today? And so today this morning, today to St. Paul, I want to talk to you on a simple subject this morning. Free your mind, refocus on worship, not your issues. Free your mind, refocus on worship and not your issues. See, if we were to look around this morning, the crowd, you know, we, we might think, well, all the pews should be filled. Well, I would dare say this, everybody that needs to be here, they're here. And so when we look at this, this, this scripture this morning, free your mind. And, and the background of the scripture tells us that Korah, the predecessor of the musicians from the tribe of, of Levi, was among 250 conspirators who rebelled against Moses during the exodus to the promised land. And so as a result of this rebellion, God opened up the earth and sent from heaven fire. And it consumed all of them. But God preserved Korah's descendants, and they remained faithful, serving God as musicians in the temple. These positions meant that they had to dwell in the house of God. And so this physical closeness that they had with God prompted them to love God and desire his ways even more than what others had felt. And so the sons, the sons of Korah longed for the Lord's house because they longed to be in the presence of God. And so those who can live in God's house should always respond in praise because nothing is better than being in God's presence. And so I have to ask you the question this morning, are you happy being in God's presence, yes, being in his house? Yes, and their joyous experience of worship in his presence, it has great benefits and we cannot measure those benefits. And so the psalm, the psalmist David here, he conveys in this chapter his whole being, his soul, his heart, his mind, his flesh. It was desiring to be where? In the Lord's house. And so our first topic we're going to look at this morning is in his house. In his house. So the psalmist, he longed to get away from the bustling world and, and be in God's presence in his temple. Now, it's true that we can meet God anywhere, but when we go to church, like St. Paul, we can set aside everything else, all the busy things that we have going on in our lives, we can set those things aside and we can quietly and attentively meditate and pray on God's word. We should find joy and strength, not only in prayers, not only in the music, not only in the songs, not only in the sermon, but we should find joy and strength even in the fellowship with others in this special place. The psalmist, he recalls the freedom that the birds, we look at verse 3. Put verse 3 up for me, uh, LeJay. When we look at verse 3, it says, Yea, the sparrow hath found an house and the swallows a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. So even the birds have freedom and access in the tabernacle. And the psalmist tells us here is, how much more should I as a child of God have this same freedom and access? And so as Christians, we should be joyous, we should be attentive, when we are in the Lord's house, right. not distracted by what issues, not distracted by stressors of our daily lives. But one thing I find interesting in verse three here is, the sparrow had found a house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Now I want you just to take out your microscopic glasses, and I want you to really look at that verse. 
does it say anything about them concerned about what they're going to eat, where they're going to sleep, what clothes they're going to wear? Does it say anything about that? No, it doesn't. The birds have no concern about what they're going to eat, where they're going to sleep, what they're going to have, what they're going to wear. And so we as Christians, we should be the same way when we come into the Lord's house. So as we pass through this wilderness of life in this world, God, he promises to open up fountains and deserts and springs and dry places. We all become stronger as we grow with God, but never weaker. So as you sit here this morning, what's on your mind? If I was to ask you all to tell me what you're thinking about right now, are you drifting off right now, kind of in and out? Thinking about problems, thinking about bills, family, marriage, work, and the list just goes on and on and on. So I would offer you a suggestion this morning. Free your mind. Refocus on worship and not your issues. This is the moment you give it all to the Lord, placing everything on him. This moment in worship, listening to his word attentively and allowing it to saturate your mind, setting you free from distractions. I've said in many services, and my mind just kind of floats. You know, it's thinking about work in the morning. It's thinking about what we're going to eat when we get out of church. It's thinking about all these other things. And I'm not attentive to the word. But if you were just to stop for a moment and pause and be attentive to God's word, if you can do this, if you could do this, then you will find solutions. Then you will find answers and guidance to the issues that you are facing outside of those doors. That's right. That's right. If you will be attentive to God's word. And that is where we miss out, St. Paul. We come into church religiously, but we ain't attentive to his word. We ain't listening. And then when God's word goes forth, we're on our phones, we Snapchat, and we're doing everything else in church service. And we ain't listening to his word. But if you were to listen and put all this other stuff out, just put all this other stuff out your mind and just listen to his word, then you would get the answers. Then you would get the solutions for what you need in your daily life outside of those double doors. Now that's about in his house. Let's look at the journey to his house. The pilgrimage to the temple, it passed through the valley of Baca, which is the valley of weeping. Now the weeping may have been symbolic of a symbolic reference to the times and struggles of the tears to which people pass through on their own to meet God. So growing strong in God's presence is often preceded by a journey through the barren places in our lives. The person who loves to spend time with God will see their adversity as an opportunity to experience God's faithfulness even more deeply. If you are walking through your own valley of weeping today, be sure that your pilgrimage leads to who? God. Not away from him. And see, that's what happens when we come to church. Our pilgrimage should lead to God, not away from him. And so now, let me answer the question that y'all all been waiting on, probably here for the last five, ten minutes. What in the world is this suitcase doing sitting up here in the middle of this aisle? Yes, sir. <laughs> Have y'all been wondering about this suitcase? You've been wondering about this suitcase? Y'all can raise your hand now. You ain't got to say nothing. Just raise your hand if you've been wondering about this suitcase. Okay, let's deal with this suitcase. We, us, all of us sitting here today, we bring so much baggage into God's house that we are distracted from his word. All right. All right. This is y'all's baggage yes, sir. that you brought in here this morning. 
Because I know all y'all brought some baggage up in here this morning. Don't even lie. You brought some baggage. So I was just going to be prophetic and bring you an example of all your baggage. This is the baggage that you brought in here. And I think here at St. Paul, we might need to put a sign up that says, leave your baggage at the door and free your mind and come in and give God some praise. Because do you ever sit around and the preacher gets up or I get up and I say, praise the Lord, everyone, how's everybody doing this morning? Y'all say, fine, you got baggage. Pastor says, give God a praise and y'all are, you got baggage. So what I'm saying here is, take your baggage. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did anybody bring any baggage in this morning? Just raise your hand again real quick. Now, anyone want to be real bold, come up here and get this suitcase for me. I'm just going to do a little teaching this morning. Just going to do a little teaching. Don't be shy. Somebody come up and get the suitcase. All right, Deacon McKenzie, you got to do it, don't you? Get the suitcase. Hopefully it ain't too heavy. Is, is it heavy? N not too heavy? All right, dear. So I want you to take that suitcase, take your baggage, and take it to the door. Take your baggage to the door. Just roll it on up out of here. Now I want y'all spiritually, while you sitting there, just roll y'all baggage right on out with him. And listen to me, roll your baggage on out to the door. Y'all look at him now. I want y'all to look at him. I know y'all being on this live can't see. He's taking it to the door. The baggage is gone. Y'all baggage gone? Y'all feel good? Okay, let's test it. Can y'all get a Lord of praise? Oh, so good now. That's a lot of life. We need to leave our baggage at the door. And see, the psalmist says it is better or more profitable to spend a day in the Lord's courts than to spend a thousand elsewhere. He continues that he'd rather be a doorkeeper in the Lord's house. But look at verse 11. Verse 11 gives us further reasons the house of the Lord is preferable than anywhere else. This is why y'all are here today. First, the Lord is a sun and shield. As the sun is the source of life and light of the world, so is the Lord to his people. Without the sun, nothing would survive. Life would be extinct. And then he provides for us what? A divine protection as a shield. That's why y'all here this morning, because the Lord is what? A sun and a shield. And then secondly, the Lord is giving. He gives grace and glory. As Christians, our walk of faith begins with grace and ultimately ends with glory. And then thirdly and lastly, the Lord is generous. The Lord may not give us everything we want, but he gives us everything that is good for us, all that we need. Now let me go a little further with that. God does not promise to give us everything we think is good. Let me say that again, because I don't think y'all got it. God does not promise to give us everything we think is good. But he gives us everything that is good for us, all that we need. Did y'all get that? He does not promise to give us everything. But here's the thing that I love about the God that I serve. He will not withhold what is permanently good for me. Did y'all catch that one? He won't give me everything that I think is good. But here's the thing. He gives me everything that is permanently good for me. This is what I want you to get out of this. If God is withholding something from you, it might be, it just might be, because it's not good for you. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. 
And if it came and it went, it might be, just might be, I'm just guessing here, it might be because it was not permanently good for you. Something that's permanent is different from something that came and went. See, too often, saints, we keep trying to hold on to things or people that were meant to be temporary in our lives and not permanent. Are y'all trying to hold on to something that's temporary and not permanent? Because if it keeps trying to leave and keeps trying to go away, it ain't permanent. But here's another thing. Then we force temporary things to stay past their deadlines in our lives and they become distractions in our worship. These things hinder our service and takes us off his path. Now I want you to let that marinate for a minute. Just, just let that marinate in your mind for a minute. We keep trying to force temporary things to stay past their deadlines. What happens when you go in Walmart? Deacon McKenzie, you go get a gallon of milk. Your wife sends you to Walmart, you get a gallon of milk. And she tells you to get the farthest day. So you got, Sister Me, you got July the 4th on the card. And you got July the 18th on the car. Which car are you gonna get? Which gallon of milk are you gonna get? You gonna get the 18th. So you get the gallon of milk that says July the 18th, expiration date, July the 18th. Well, Sister Jones, we keep that gallon of milk to July the 30th, and we still trying to drink it. You keeping it past its expiration date. So what happens when you drink that milk on July the 30th and it done expired and it done soured? What happens when you drink that milk? You gonna get sick. We trying to keep a lot of things in our lives past the expiration date. So there are some things that are temporary in our lives. When that deadline hits, you need to get rid of it. Now boo, I'm just gonna tell you, if he ain't doing you right now, you just need to get rid of her. If she ain't acting right now, you just need to get rid of her. If it has expired, you need to get rid of it. Now look at our God. He would give us the means to walk along his paths, but we gotta do the walking. Now how do we walk? How do we walk? As our pastor would say, I'm glad you asked. When we obey him, he will not hold anything back that will help us serve him. That's how we walk. If you then being evil, look at Matthew 7, 11, it says, if you were then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask? Goes on further to say, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Romans 8 and 32. Here Paul establishes the unimaginable length that God's magnanimity would go through if we just trust in him. And so this whole psalm, it describes the God we serve and worship and the God that deserves our praise. Now let's look at verse 12. It says, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. When we trust in God, we are blessed and have everything that we need according to his will. So what is it this morning that you think that you have missing in your life? And I would dare say, are you trusting God? Are you gonna refocus on worship and not your issues. And this lesson this morning out of this sermon is in order for us to experience God's fullness, we need to be in his presence. We need to be in his house. We need to be in his presence. In order to be guided by him, we must let go of some things in our lives. That's why we rolled the luggage up out of here. 
you got to let go of some things. See, what we have to understand, saints, if you're going to be in God's presence, you can't have your luggage. You got to leave your luggage at the door. Lord, if I can just get in your presence, all the things I got going on in my life, all the problems, if I can just get in your presence, you will provide for me exactly what I need, and it will be good. And it will help me serve you more fully. See, that needs to be our thoughts when we come to church every Sunday. When you come to Bible class, whenever you tune in to any service, that needs to be your thought. Lord, if I can just get in your presence, all this drama I got going on right now in my life, if I can just get in your presence and forget about all that, then I'll be free. Then I can get some answers. Because too many times I've come into the church with issues going on. And I'm telling you from experience, if you come in and just free your mind of all that stuff. See, I got two phones. I got a work phone and I got a personal phone. Now, where's my work phone at? Outside of my truck. I don't want to deal with no issues. I don't want no guards calling me. I don't want no clients calling me. I leave it in the truck. I deal with it when I get out of service because I want my mind free from work. And anything else I got going on mentally in my mind, I free my mind of it. Because I wanna just be focused on what God has for me. And so that is what we need to be when we come to church. And so as I close this morning, churches, worship settings, they all changing. But if we were to follow after what's trending, and appeal to the multiple generations, we can find ourselves, saints, compromising God's word. Worship is a lifestyle, and our lifestyle of worship should be in reverence to God. Time spent with God, it impacts our lives. If we ration out our time with God, it shows in our lives. When our desire to seek God starts to decline, so does our personal worship. We must revive our craving for God's word and for worshiping God. It is the catalyst for revival in the church. And so when you look around today, do you see a strong desire for people to want to attend church? No, you do not. We have so much baggage, so many excuses for not coming to church now. Church is where it's at. Church is where it's at. This is where you get your answers. This is where you can get set free. You can worship God anywhere, at any time. But let me tell you, it's special. And it's totally different when you can come into his house and you don't have no TV, you don't have no kids running around. You don't have no other noise. It's just you and the other members of St. Paul listening to the word. That's it. Funny story. Last night, my wife is going to laugh, I was prepping for the sermon. Now, mind you, the, the Lord kind of touched on my mind last Sunday about this sermon. I ain't know I had to preach. But he kind of touched on my mind last Sunday. So Jamaica, you know, I hit my little notes, you know. Y'all see me up here, I pop down my little notes, you know, and I like, okay, Lord, got it. And that's it. Well, Pastor hits me after serve. You gotta have a serve next Sunday. I'm like, well, thank you, Lord. You kind of gave me something this Sunday. So I'm like, okay, well, I prep. So I start prepping. We got business stuff going on. We got uh, work stuff going on. We got all kinds of stuff going on all throughout the week. So my mind is just everywhere. But I'm still prepping, trying to get ready. So last night, so Jamaica, I got all my sermon notes wrote out, you know, everything done. So my wife and them, they want to keep looking at movies. You know, so we went, uh, we looked at a Kevin Hart movie. Don't y'all get all judgy. Yeah, I look at Kevin Hart. So we looked at a Kevin Hart movie. So I'm sitting there laughing at Kevin Hart. 
uh, I think it's a man from uh, Ontario or something. So I'm looking at the movie. Well, then they put on uh, the Will Smith movie about Venus and Serena. So I'm looking at that movie. Now, mind you, I'm still sitting at the counter, y'all. My computer's sitting up just like this because I'm prepping for my sermon. Well, I'm turned around like this, and I'm looking at the movie. So now after, what, two hours and something, now my wife has the audacity to say, are you studying? So I'm sitting there like, I done looked at a whole movie, part of another movie, and now you want to say something? Am I studying? I'm like, yeah. You ain't studying your, look, my computer just black. Screen done went dead. So now she wants to get on me about prepping for the sermon. So now she tells Jasmine, we'll turn the TV off so he can study. Distractions. I had a little distraction going on. And so now TV gets turned off and what happens? Now I'm up to 12 o'clock. Well, I'm still prepping. Because why? I was distracted. And so all I'm saying is it's easy for us to get distracted by things in our lives. But when we come into the Lord's house, Thinking about what Jesus did for us on the cross. He died for us all. And he rose for us all. He gave his life for you and I. So that we might be in a right relationship with the Father, God. And so as we sit here this morning, let us be attentive. Let us cast aside all the problems and issues that we're dealing with. Cast those things aside and just be attentive to his word. And I guarantee you, if you are attentive to God's word and listening to what he has for you today, when you leave back out those doors, you will get the answer that you need. You will know how to address the problems that you're dealing with. God will see you through it. I can testify he's done it for me too many times. All we got to do is give him his time. Give him his time. If y'all were to look at your watches now and tell me, how long have I been up here? All you had to do was give God his 30 minutes or however long I've been up here. Give him his time. Focus on him. Listen to his word. Get something out of it. And then go back out those doors. And God will give you the answer that you need to deal with your problem. So those folks that are raising Cain, giving you all kind of issues, God will tell you how to deal with them. Sometimes you just got to keep your mouth closed. So I pray that God has answered whatever you all need an answer today. I pray that he's given you an answer. And I pray that he will continue to guide you through everything that you're dealing with. Let us stand at this time and pray. And after I get through praying, Sister Jury has an announcement. So let's not dismiss so quickly, okay? Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly fathers, we stand before you this morning. We just praise and thank you, O Lord, for your mercy and grace. Father God, we thank you for this word this morning, O Heavenly Father, as we free our minds, O God, and refocus on worship, God, and not our issues. Father God, we pray, O Heavenly Father, you just continually lead God and direct us, O God, that we be more competent, O Heavenly Father, able to deal with the issues that we face through our daily lives. Father God, we just trust and depend on you and your word, O Heavenly Father. And God, we pray, O God, you give us the answers, you give us the solutions that we need. And Father God, we thank you for it now, O Lord. And Lord, we pray that you look over our pastor, look over our first lady, look over our entire church family, O Heavenly Father, and just bless and meet their needs now. And Father God, if there's anyone here, O God, that is that is not saved upon this day, God, we just pray that you just touch their hearts and minds, O oh Father, that they can come to know you as a Lord and personal Savior. Father God, we praise you for it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sister Jerry, y'all. This is just a, a reminder um, of our church anniversary that's coming up. Uh, we have our Bible t-shirts. Thank you, Sister Jerry. We are dismissed.
Yeah. <laughs>